On Blues Radio International, we're here at the 2016 Blues Music Awards in Memphis with a new member of the Blues Hall of Fame, Elvin Bishop. When I got to Chicago, it was uh, 1960, and there weren't many white people into blues, even in Chicago. And uh, I'd go down in the ghetto. I, I went to the University of Chicago. It was kind of educational as my cover story. But I, I was lucky enough to get a, a scholarship where I could go any place I wanted to. And my folks had been through the Depression, and they had this picture of uh, education being spelled with a big sparkling capital E, you know. And so it really was, would have been unpopular for me to mess that up, which I did. So I was in the doghouse for a few years till I started bringing home TVs and stereos and stuff like that, you know. But uh, the, uh, the blues and the white population had not met to any extent at that time. The only, only way that a white person would see blues in the early 60s was if you went to a folk festival, blues was considered a small department of blues. And that would be one old guy with an acoustic guitar is what it was, you know. Meanwhile, in the ghetto, Muddy Waters and Magic Sam and Howlin' Wolf were blasting out electric blues, you know, and that was the real stuff. It was, when I first got to Chicago, it was like hip hop is today. It was the living, happening, daily music of the black people. And people don't realize how huge that scene was. They said, well, Muscle White was there at the same time you were. You guys must have hung out all the time. I said, no, we hardly ever saw each other because there were so many blues clubs that you'd get your own little circuit, you know, sometimes geographical, sometimes just by people you knew. And you'd go to those clubs and uh, another guy might get a different circuit. You know, I bet you there were 200 blues clubs. That seems hard to believe, you know. And uh, it's extraordinary. Charlie told me that the, the way he found the clubs he went to is he worked for a, a, an insect ex extermination service. Yeah. And he was on this yeah. truck and he'd go and he'd see and he'd go right. back at night to the clubs that he went by right. to exterminate. Right, he told me that, yeah. I, I found mine, uh, I, I, I didn't ever drive till I was about 50 some because I was a bad drinker and I didn't want to kill nobody, you know. But uh, when I quit drinking, I got a driver's license. But, uh, I'm, the first thing I did when I got to Chicago, I went to the University of Chicago. I made friends with the black guys that worked in the cafeteria. And they were all from the South, and they were all big blues fans. And so within a week or so, I was going to the, they were taking me to the blues clubs, you know. Uh, I used to go down in the ghetto, sometimes by myself, which took a certain amount of nerve. But... Uh, these guys would take me to like Pepper's Lounge where Muddy Waters was playing or the Blue Flame where Little Smokey was playing or Junior Wells and Teresa's and places like that. We had our own little circuit of four or five clubs that we'd always go to, you know, and uh, it, it made it easy going with the, you know, four or five black guys and they kind of smoothed me in there, you know, and the musicians turned out to be friendly. The, Chicago at that time was not the the hard edge place it is now and the murder capital and all that because the hard drugs and the gangs weren't happening then, you know. It was more like a big southern town.